don't want the truth because deep down in places you don't talk about it, parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. Oh, yeah, it's going to be one of those videos. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk entertainment. Wanted to do a video, wanted to enhance my feng shui, wanted to find my chi. Before I talked about everything that the Giants did on Thursday, I did a video on Thursday about the release of Blake Martinez. But now I'm looking at this from a different perspective, and that's a total lie. Because you know what? I'm looking at it from an honest-to-God football perspective, not only in reference to talent, but also in reference to the salary cap and a few other things. So it's going to be interesting. But before we get into it all, let's go over all the moves that the Giants made on Thursday and somehow went from $3 million over the cap to $5 million over the cap. Okay? Of course, we know that they released Blake Martinez. We're going to talk about that. And then signed uh, Phillips off this uh, wire, excuse me, off the waiver wires from Baltimore. They had injury settlements with Andre Miller and Ricky, so- jo- Ricky Seals Jones. Uh, Willer, um, we see Miller was waived off the IR. Jones had his, basically just had his contract terminated. We also brought back Austin Calitro, Tanner Hudson, and Nick Williams. Uh, the Giants, you're going to need to make an additional roster space as well. Headed to the IR, Shane Lemieux, Rodarius Williams, and Smith. Well, kind of the things that we knew. And basically, the Giants added six players to the practice squad on Thursday, including Garcia, Davis, Jefferson. Uh, I don't, I, I can't remember. Some one of the defensive ends, and and Charles Wiley, and also blimped in the wide receiver. So they've had a busy day. <laughs> they've they've had a they've had a busy day. They also terminated the contracts of Darren Evans and one of the safeties and a few other people off the practice squad. Their contracts were terminated. They also had players come in for workouts. Out of the group, there was no one. <laughs> There's no one I want to talk about out of the group because they're, they're just eight guys that are just prob- probably want to never could have, should have, would have be in the league. But that's just, the way, that's just the way it is because the Giants, as we jokingly always say, when you're playing against third and fourth teamers in preseason, they're the Home Depot team, and the Giants right now are turning into the Home Depot team a little bit. A lot of it's calorie, yes, a lot of it is salary cap situations. Yes, I 100% understand it, but we're going to talk about that. A lot of that, I think, it may be a, a mis, misthought process in regards to talent. And maybe we're just going for the total tank. Maybe, maybe that's it. And someone asked me today. They said, and, and I thought it was an interesting, I thought it was an interesting tweet. I thought it was, I thought it was interesting. Because they said, do you think that the Giants, the way they're constructed now, could beat Ohio State? And we're going to get back to that question, but you know, I want you to leave it in the comments. Do you think the Giants could beat Ohio State right now? The number two ranked Ohio State who's playing tomorrow against Notre Dame, the number five ranked. But do you think they could do that? Do you think they have the talent, the NFL caliber talent to beat the top ranked college team? Leave your thought process in the comment, in the comment section below, because I'm curious. I would do a poll, but I don't know how to do a poll. Now, we're talking about Blake Martinez. We are saying it was a mutual decision. There was a mutuality there. We, we both, we all wanted, we all wanted to move on. And that's, and that's what, we, and that's what they're, they're that, that, that's what they're going to go with. Now, people are saying, well, Tim, you know what your problem is when you think about Joe Shane down Dable. I find your lack of faith disturbing. It's not a lack of faith. It's just the fact that if you looked at this from a football perspective, you were three million over. You're now five million over and you gutted your linebacking core. And now I understand they say it's a mutual decision that Blake Martinez didn't want to be with the Giants. Why would he want to be with the Giants? He played no more than 18 snaps in any of the three preseason games. I watched, I laugh because I watched the Jet game yesterday, the Jet Giant game yesterday. I rewatched it on the NFL Network. My wife was like, is that, is that live? I'm like, no, I'm rewatching the game. Because I wanted to watch the first quarter that Blake played in. He had, his fluidity was fine. He was moving sideline to sideline. He dropped back into coverage. So, I mean, it didn't look like it was injury related. You also have to point out the fact that he lost the honor of being, you know, to me, it's no longer an honor for the Giants. He's got 10 of them. He lost the honor of being a captain, even though it was 10. And I just thought, I thought he was like an assistant captain. He lost, you knew something was wrong when he wasn't a captain on the team. It, it's, it's interesting because you know what? The Giants would have saved more money if they released Blake 
in March, they would have saved they would have saved additional cap space. This is a Logan Ryan situation all over again. I understood. I've said this about Logan Ryan a million times before. I've mentioned this a bazillion times. The NFL allows you before June 1st to use two post June 1st designations on players, which means you can cut a guy like in May and he still goes against the June 1st designation. Now the giants didn't do that. Instead of saving three plus million, they saved 700,000 because they cut him before June 1st. Now the whole thought process was, well, we're saving our cap space for 2023. And that, because what would have happened is we would have had a million and a half dead cap number in 2023 for the Logan Ryan contract. And now what we did is while we, we missed out on over 270, 270 million dollars in caps, additional cap savings by not giving them that designation, we saved a million and a half next year. <laughs> All right. Has everyone got that? Right now, the Giants have over $42 million in dead cap space, $42 million. And they still have $5 million to clear within the span of the next four days just to get under, not even counting operational cap space. Now, some people are going to point out, well, Shane had the same problem in Buffalo. No, 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 no. Buffalo made the playoffs. They went 7-9 and nine with a rookie quarterback and then started making the playoffs again. The cap situation was not this dire. And some of this cap situa- situation itself is self-inflicted by the Giants. You don't want to sit there and say, is the team tanking? Are we tanking? You don't want to say that. You don't you don't want you do not want to go down that road. But if you look at this situation, it's kind of interesting because of the fact that it's like, okay, if we go back now and look at the roster, look at the roster the way it is construed right now in the depth chart. Let's just go to the linebacking situation. Okay, let's just go to the linebackers. You have Carter Coughlin. Okay. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. You have Carter Coughlin starting. You have McFadden starting. You have Tay Crowder. I like Tay Crowder, but Tay Crowder is an undersized middle linebacker who gets lost in the sauce quite extensively in traffic. He doesn't know how to slice. I was thinking about it the other day. And, you know, and and, an old, uh, he's still, he's probably, he's even older now. Uh, One of my linebacker coaches once told me, you know what you need to do? You need to flow like water. You need to you need to have the ability to flow like water through the traffic to find the openings to make the tackles. Tay Crowder doesn't do that because he's un, he's an undersized middle linebacker. And then you're going to start the rookie McFadden and put along Carter Coughlin hasn't played in a year. And then we have Kayvon Thibodeau who's sitting there may not play. And then we're looking at our secondary with Robinson, Jackson, Love, and McKinney. Outside of McKinney, I'm not feeling I'm not feeling confident that this isn't going to turn into a situation where Tennessee just drops the bomb on us. You got Ojolari who's still hurt. You got Ward that's hurt. You got Smith who's out. You got Dexter Lawrence who is an undersized nose tackle and is better suited as a quasi t- nose tackle end. You got Leonard Williams who's got an elbow problem. <laughs> and then you're going to back him up with Kalitro Williams and Ellis and DJ Davidson. I, and I looked at this, and I, I just thought to myself, it was crazy. Now, we, uh, there's a gentleman that I used to work with in Miami who, who I used to get information from. He's retired now. I asked him this question. I said, is this an NFL roster? Is this a competitive NFL roster? If you had to rank the Giants out of the 32 teams as this being a competitive NFL roster, he said they would probably be 33rd. Because of the fact he's like, you have unproven first and second-year players, rookies starting, and you are going to rely on the likes of Neil and Thibodeau to anchor your offense and your defense. And you have overpriced veterans, something like 17 or 18 percent of our cap. I can't remember the ex- I cannot remember the exact number. Hold on. I wrote it down here. I found the number I was, I was looking for. I wrote this down that if you take a look at the top three contracts on the Giants roster, 27 percent of the entire roster is tied up within three contracts. That's Leonard Williams, Kenny G, and Adoree Jackson. Now, I don't want to hear from Giant fans, or a certain segment of Giant fans, that we should never have signed these guys. Because a lot of these, a lot of these fans wet themselves when we signed Leonard Williams, Kenny G, and Adoree Jackson. They wet themselves. I thought these were the greatest signings in the world. We're going to the playoffs. 
but they didn't because these were overpriced. You were overpaying for guys. Now, that's not Shane's fault, but you, you gave a Dory Jackson a raise where everyone else in the NFL basically said, how the hell do you give a guy a raise coming off an injury who has not played, played up to par for two seasons? You gave Kenny G more money, $72 million, and you actually gave him 30 something million more than the next guy who got like $32 million. For a guy coming off a hip injury who had two good seasons and most of his touchdowns in one. And then you have, you know, King of the Almost Sack. We're not even getting into that. So the Shane has already come out and said that more there's going to be some restructuring. And I laugh because you're going to restructure guys after you have all this dead cap space. You're going to start restructuring guys. It just it just doesn't it doesn't make sense a little bit what they're doing. And like I said, I am I am still a Shane fan. I am still a Dable fan. But if you take a look at this situation, you got you got rid of Bradbury and Logan Ryan. That's twenty two million dollars in cap space. And you gutted your secondary and did not replace them with NFL talent. You did the same thing to Blake Martinez. So what I'm going to look at, I look at it this way. Things that are on the book for Shane. There's 28 million in dead cap space in my mind that's on the book for Shane. That's 28 million that he created. And if you look at the other guys that he got rid of, he signed and got rid of like Jones and Douglas and, and what's his name? Gano and Hilton and Gilbert and Corbin. He, he, he created almost 30 million, close to 28, I would say like $28 million in, in this cap situation on his own. That's what he did. You could hate this fact. You could, you could try to piece this fact together with me. You could try to tell me all the wonderful things that they're going to be doing. But if I'm looking at this season, I am not looking at 2023. And I can say this shit because I am a season ticket holder. You are not, you are doing a disservice to the fans that paid the PSLs, that paid for these seats by doing this, by putting on, at sometimes what I'm going to say is going to be an inferior product. Because like I said, you look at this, and if you look at this roster objectively, we've said this a million times, not subjectively, objectively. Look at the D, look at the offense. You got Saquon starting, I'm fine with that, but you got, then you, then you got Kenny and, Ho- and Kadarius and, and, and a host of others. You got Bellinger coming off a concussion. Andrew Thomas is only yes on that line. You really still haven't opened that left guard. You got Feliciano, Glowinski, and Neil. Feliciano has never been healthy in the last two years. Glowinski, you got to hope it's not a system guy. Neil's a rookie. That is a recipe for disaster. And then you're going to rely on the likes of David Sills and Richie James, the 5'8 Richie James, when you already have the 5'8 Wandell Robinson. You have a team full of slot guys. I am hoping that I am totally wrong about this. But I haven't been wrong about a lot in the last two years. And when I'm wrong, I admit it. But I'm hoping... There's some master plan because I'm seeing a three win team. I went from a five win team to a three win team. And this is taking this. This is not having my giant blinders on. This is looking at this from a perspective of NFL quality talent and the fact that we are just and I understand what the cap situation is and I get it. I 100% get it. I said this was going to be a bad season from the beginning, but I do not understand how you come out of these 50s. How do you came out of training camp? With a roster, in some ways, is worse than what you went in with. And I know they're going to say, <clears throat> excuse me, I know they're going to say it's system guys. I know understand. I understand they're going to say that they're going to say it's guys that fit the Dable system, it's guys that fit the Wink system. This is what they're going to tell us. But as the smart fan, and a lot of you are smart fans, you can look at this and say, okay. Kadarius Tony injured. Wandale Robinson, a Smurf. Let's hope he does well. He needs to learn to protect himself, and I'm going to keep saying that over and over again because some people are like, well, he's going to be great. He may be great, but he needs to learn to protect himself. Watch some of the plays that he got wrecked on the field. You got the 5'8", Richie James. You got Darius Slayton. Everyone wanted, to get rid- Everyone wanted to get rid of Darius Slayton but me. Shane has already come out and said Darius is going to be on the roster. I said you can't get rid of him because you need a true number two or number one outside wide receiver, but everyone's going to get rid of him. Because you can't rely on David Sills. David Sills disappears when he's not against the Home Depoters. How somehow this turned into a rant? Don't know how. Don't know how. Boy, 
That escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. That truly did, Ron. That truly did. We'll have a lot of moves coming up. Well, we might even stream tonight. I don't know. If we do, I'll, I'll let everyone know because I got a lot to say. I got a lot to say, and I still got a lot more to say. But you know what? We're, we're going to save it a little bit. We got the season coming up, not this weekend, but next weekend. Of course, we're in Tennessee. Then we got the Carolina Panthers at home. Hopefully, we can pencil that as a win the Carolina Panthers, but I don't even know. Uh, I will be at the game. We'll be giving stuff away. We're going to have a tent. We're going to do some, we're going to be live streaming from the parking lot. I've already worked out the logistics of that, so that'll be fun. So stop by. We'll have open chairs. People can come in. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue. We're bringing you the best in New York Giant Sports Talk Entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you subscribe, if you ring that bell, you know what it means. That'd be awesome.